All right. Praise the Lord. I hope you all have had a good week. Amen. The Lord is really working in our midst. Hallelujah. I feel I feel uh, that we we're starting a new a new age in, our, in our church life. Yes, amen. I agree. Because uh, Jesus is alive and well. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. Last week we were studying out of the book of Second Samuel, chapter fifteen, and I think I left off at verse thirty-two. Uh, we found last week that uh, uh, that David went up to uh, Mount, of, Mount of Olives to pray just like Jesus did. And he had prayed that Ahithophel's uh, counsel would be, would, be, would be foolishness to people. Right. And uh, so this is where, we, where we, uh, we, we're taking off in verse 32 where David sends a spy. If you're going to, uh, according to the outline that I've written. And it came to pass that when David was come to the top of the mount where he worshipped God, behold, Hushai, the archite, came to meet him, and his coat rent and earth upon his head. Unto whom David said, If thou passest on with me, then thou shalt be a burden unto me. But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant hitherto, so will I now also be thy servant. Then mayest thou for me defeat the counsel of Hithophel. <laughs> and hast thou not there with Zadok and Ebiathar the priest? Therefore it shall be that what thing soever thou shalt hear out of the king's house, then thou shalt tell it to Zadok and Abiathar the priest. Behold, they have there with, with them two sons, Ahimaaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. By them ye shall send unto me everything that ye shall hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. I thought this was an interesting thing, that when David goes up to pray about the situation, right. God immediately sends him somebody to help him. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing that God answers those kinds of prayers? Yes, He does. Hallelujah. Simple you, prayers. You believe in simple prayers? Yes. Oh, yes. I do. I believe in simple prayers. I remember, I remember uh, you're talking about me being an electrician. At one time, I was an electrician's helper. And uh, I, uh, I got put on a service truck. And uh, they would make you do like four tickets a day and be all over Metroplex. You'd drive. And I got in... Three accidents while I was in doing that. I did it for two years. And this, after the third accident, uh, I was praying to God that I would not have to drive this service truck no more. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, guess what? When I come to work, they, they, they didn't want me driving the service truck no more. They said I was kind of a... a, a they'd rather me wire houses than drive the service truck. So, All right. God bless. Uh, going back, those small prayers God will answer... Uh, remember that the mount was David's place of worship, just like Jesus had the same place. Right. And uh, David's worship was interrupted by an answer from God. A man named Hushai, his name means hasty. Uh, and uh, da David said that, well, you can't come with me because you're going to be a burden to me. Right. And then he, then he had a great suggestion. He told him that uh, he had a better idea that Infiltrate the government of Absalom. Send in somebody to to, to infiltrate the government. Uh, knowledge is power. That's right. Amen. It says uh, it says here that that you may defeat the council of Ahithophel. Now that word council there is purpose and plans. The plans of Ahithophel were evil. Okay. Uh, and also, David had already had allies positioned in the government already. He had the priests there. Remember when he sent the priests back? Mm -hmm. And now he has. they have two sons. And uh, one of them is named uh, Ahimaaz, which means brother of anger. And then the other one's named Jonathan, which, you know, that was David's name of David's best friend that was killed, uh, Saul's son. But... Uh, Jonathan means Jehovah given or God given. Uh, and then, the, of course, the two priests, uh, Zadok means just. We had studied that before. And Abiathar means father of abundance. 
And uh, let's see, what else do I got here that I've written down? Hushai was David's friend, it says in verse 37. Uh, and that word friend in Hebrew is re uh, which is spelled R-E-E-H. And it means a companion. This man was a companion of David, a friend of David. Um, My Bible says it's uh, David's personal advisor. Personal advisor. Yeah, he had advice also. Uh, it is always good to have good, loyal friends, and they are hard to come by. Amen. So I think that's one of the reasons that... Uh, uh, that this church has stayed together, that me and, me and uh, the Grissoms have been friends. I mean, not I mean, we, won't, we don't hang out all the time together, but we do hang out sometimes together, right. you know? And, uh, but, but we've been friends, and that helps stabilize a, a, a church to be Amen. friends, you know? I agree. Okay, uh, let's go on. From chapter 16, Ziba deceives David. Mm. And when David was a little past the top of the hill, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth met him with a couple of asses saddled upon them, 200 loaves of bread and 100 bunches of raisins and 100 of summer fruit and a bottle of wine. And the king said unto Ziba, What meanest thou by these? And Ziba said, The asses be for the king's household to ride on, the bread and the summer fruit for the young men to eat, the wine that such as be faint in the wilderness may drink. And king said, and where is thy master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abideth at Jerusalem, for he said, Today shall the horse house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Then said the king to Ziba, Behold, thine are all that pertaineth unto Mephibosheth. And Ziba said, I humbly beseech that I may find grace in the sight of my lord, O king. Do you think he was a little upset because, you know, before he was Lord over Mephibosheth, and now all of a sudden Mephibosheth was, was Lord over him because of what David had done, and now here he is trying to put him in a bad light? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, my notes here say that in 2 Samuel, Samuel chapter 9, we studied about him, mm -hmm. and uh, David turned his whole family into farmers, and before that they were the rich. That's right. Mm -hmm. They were the rich before that. Now, now uh, the poor little cripple boy is the rich man. And uh, they're farmers. Yep. But that's the way it should have been. Oh, that's it should have been that way. It should have been yeah. that way. He took advantage of a, posi of a position pretty much. I think Ziba is plotting, he's plotting to discredit his master, Mephibosheth, yes. and gain the land that was formerly Saul's. Right. Not his. Not his. That's not his. That's that not was Saul's land. That was Saul's land. Right. Okay. Uh, I think David already thinks something is amiss, don't you think? Because he says, uh, he says there in verse uh, two, uh, why did you bring these things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You weren't my friend before. Why are you my friend now? Well, something's up. <laughs> something's up when, when you're when trying somebody, to butter me up or something. Yep, yeah, trying to butter him up. Um, you know, you know what he brought? Brought? I thought this was kind of cool. They they brought taxi cabs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. It would be like giving your 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 friend a four wheeler, you know, uh, the donkeys, and then then also wine. Now, when it says a bottle of wine, there, what does it say? Uh, does it say a bottle of wine? Yeah, a bottle of wine in verse one. Uh, these bottles of wine would feed a hundred people. Yeah. I mean, you know, what I'm saying is these were like gigantic flasks of wine. Right. Not, not not like you know a little tiny bottle of wine. It was a wine skin. Big wine skin. Yeah. Brother Keith, my, of course, I got the the Holmes Christian Standard Bible, and it says in there, and the wine is for those to drink who become exhausted in the desert. Yeah. So wine was used for medicinal purposes as well back then. Mm -hmm. Just an excuse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, now the master's son, he called him the master's son. Now he he David specifically said to to Ziba about the master's son in verse three. Where is thy master's son? And the master, who's the master there? That is he speaking about? Mephibosheth. Right now the master's son is actually Mephibosheth, but the master was Saul. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. See. On mine it says, and where's Mephibosheth's, uh, Mephibosheth? Mephibosheth. Thank you. Saul's <laughs> grandson. Yeah. So it makes a specification, you know. And it's, he's, he's, he answered him, he says he's in Jerusalem where Saul's kingdom would be today restored. Restored. Shh. That's where in Hebrew, shub, brought back. Uh, Mine says something a little bit different. Okay, what does it say? He said, today I, he said, he said, today I will get back the kingdom of my grandfather Saul. Right. He thinks he's going to get it back. But Ziba seems to be trying to align himself with David. Right. And try to make sure that he has that wedge. Yeah, that little wedge there because uh, <laughs> Absalom Don't you just love those had taken the kingdom because David was in flight at this time. Uh, David assures Ziba that Mephibosheth, all, all that Mephibosheth owns was his. Uh, now, was Ziba a deserter? Maybe. All right. Let's keep going with the story. Verse 5. Shimei. Oh, this guy, this guy's an interesting character here. He curses David. And when King David came by uh, bah Bahurim, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Jera. He came forth and cursed as he came. And he cast stones at David, and at all the servants of the King David, and all the people, and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left and thus said Shimei when he cursed, Come out, come out, thou bloody men, and thou men of Belial. The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. Interesting. Yeah, mine says it a little bit. It is interesting, but I mean, how many do? How many people do that? I mean, I'm going to say, uh, I've perceived it where people will say certain things when they don't even know. Absolutely. You know. They go by what they've heard. Or what they they think. Okay, know? but I have to. I I don't like this guy at all. But you got to realize that the uh, that there's a foreign army coming into their into their nation. Yeah. And so he's casting stones at his enemy. Uh, and I wonder how many times this has been repeated in history. I remember seeing in the Gaza Strip in, in, uh, in Israel, little kids throwing rocks at tanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the same way this guy's throwing rocks at armies. Yeah. They, they can kill him. Easily. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, but he's defending their honor. Now, I also want to point out something interesting about this particular this particular man and what he calls David. He calls him the man of Belial. Um, let's look up something in the New Testament. Actually, he's found three times in the New Testament. Let's look some of them up. Okay. Um, Matthew chapter 12, and it's kind of long, 24 through 32. And the same scriptures found in Mark 3, 22 through 30. And the reason I brought this up is that David parallels Jesus in a lot of ways. Okay? Who's got it? Matthew 12, 24 through 32. I do. But when the Pharisees heard about the miracle, they said, No wonder you can cast out demons. He gets his power from Satan, the prince of demons. Jesus knew their thoughts and replied, "Any kingdom divided with, excuse me, any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. A town or family splintered by feuding will fall apart. And if Satan is casting out Satan, he is divided and fighting against himself. His own kingdom will not survive. And if I empower, if I am empowered by Satan, what about your own exorcists? Hmm. They they cast out demons too." Mm -hmm. So they can, they will uh, so they will condemn you for what you have said. But if I am casting out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. For who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man like Satan and plunder his goods? Only someone even stronger, someone who could tie him up and then plunder his house. Mm. And you said verse thirty. 
32. Go Always 32. 32. Anyone who isn't with me opposes me, and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. If I tell you every sin and blasphemy can be forgiven, except blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which will never be forgiven, anyone who speaks against the Son of Man can be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will <coughs> never be forgiven, either in this world or in the world to come. Amen. The reason I brought that up was that, is that David was being called the man of Belial, or the man of, of man of evil. Okay. Right. And here I found that Jesus is is being called Beelzebub, which is right. the Lord of the Flies. And uh, and Jesus said it's an unforg unforgivable sin. There's only one. He said that there's it's blasphemy <laughs> against the Holy Ghost. Right. So what is that? What do you think that is? I've had people ask me that. What is this unforgivable sin? What is it, Frank? Uh, probably attributing to Satan the works of God. Yeah, attributing to Satan the works of God. And that's exactly what was happening here with David. Right. Okay? Now, some of these things he said, were they true? Um, uh, I'm talking about Shimei uh, speaking these words. Well, I go... think in his perception, keep in mind, you know, to me, everyone's perception is their own reality. Right. And, I mean, in his mind, he was thinking, yes, now now it's your turn. Here, see, you know, other people call it karma. I don't believe in karma, but, not or, remotely. you know, but I felt like that's kind of the way he's there. It's like, oh, you deserve this. This is, you know, you should have had it in the first place. You stole it, you know. You know, uh, his name is interesting. <coughs> Shimei means famous. Does it really? Yeah. Well, and I was talking it. about him today. Yeah, true. <laughs> But anybody that thinks they're famous... <laughs> or infamous. Infamous, yeah. That's better. Uh, yeah, it that's it, it says here he was cursing. Uh, <coughs> and uh, I don't know what this guy was famous for, though. Right. On mine it says, get out here, you murderer, you scoundrel. <laughs> yeah, you, you murderer, you scoundrel. And it, it even goes on to say, you know, in verse 8, it says, the Lord is paying you back for the bloodshed in Sal's clan. You stole his throne and now the Lord has given you your... Uh, given it to your son Absalom. At last you will taste some of your own medicine, for you are a murderer. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty blunt there. That is. That's why when I said mine reads a little bit different, but it's like pretty much, you know, and in verse 9 it's like, why should this dead dog, well this is what I hadn't got there yet. Right. <laughs> it's okay. a dead dog. Let me go back a little bit though. The word bloody man in Hebrew is dam. D-A-M. And it means bloodthirsty. The root word of that is to cut off. And uh, similar to, uh, you know, like, like I, I wrote there, uh, we already studied that part. Uh, now, let me ask you something, though. It's said here in that he accused him that all the blood of the house of Saul is upon David. Right. Did David have anything to do with the death of Saul? No. Oh. Nothing. Nothing to do with the death of Saul. He never touched him even when he So this him. is a lie. Yes. He, could okay? killed, he could have killed him a number of times. A yeah. number of times. And but we studied it in depth. And he, he this is a lie. Touch, touch not my anointed. Mm -hmm. exactly. You know, the funny thing is, when he was a warrior, he was fighting for Saul. Oh, I know. I mean, it's like, when he, had, when he was that mighty, valiant warrior, he was fighting for the house of Saul. I know, and this guy just turned it around and spout, spouting all this stuff that's untrue, cursing, right. you know. Exactly. Cursing the Lord's anointing. Exactly. You know, I had that happen to me at work. I've had that happen. I got accused. Of, uh, 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 I got accused of this last week when I when I wrote that man up. Uh, yeah. I got accused of casting the devil out at work. That's what I got accused of. Well, I'm glad you did. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I felt really good when I was sitting there. You know, he says, "I'm going to turn you in." I'm going, "Go ahead." Did Go you get, ahead. Did you get in trouble for it? No, it he didn't. worked, didn't it? Yes, it worked fine. He got in trouble. I did. Oh, you don't know, want to know what my boss said to him. Asking my God boss did, is not a Christian. Asking God to judge them. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, I used that, and it worked. But I'm like, and he's still work. under conviction. It will work every time, brother. But it's like it's amazing. Of course, we're going to cast you out. We're not going to give you a football. No. Not a crap. And the guy was saying, I shouldn't do that. I should have called him in the office. I said, they were fighting. I had every right to cast the demon out. 
God's plan, Satan's plans for you were, for, were, were was for you to get fired and get you out of there. Yeah, and it didn't work. No, of course. No, I got God's cover. Yes, you do. Okay, let's go to verse 9. Shemai is spared. Now, this is really interesting, though. Then said <laughs> Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. <laughs> and I, like king, I do too. And the king said, What am I to do with you, you sons of Zariah? So let him curse, because the Lord hath said unto him, Curse David. Who shall say then, Where hast thou done so? And David said, Abishai, and to all his servants, Behold my son, which came forth out of my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more may now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone, and let him curse, for the Lord has bidden him. It may be that the Lord will look on mine affliction, and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. Amen. And David and his men went by the way Shimei went along on the hillside over against him, and cursed as he went, and threw dust stones at him, and cast dust. And the king and all the people that were with him came weary and refreshed themselves there. Okay. Uh, that was pretty cool. Abishai, in verse uh, 9, uh, Abishai means father of a gift, and then uh, Zeruiah, Zer Zeruiah means wounded. Uh, you know, this guy, this guy here is pretty cool, though. I like Abishai. Yeah, I do too. Uh, he reminds me of... Uh, the thing in Fantastic Four. Let's take off his head, you know. Boom! Let's just get it. Boom! Yeah. Come on, you know. And he calls him a moot Caleb, a dead dog, right? A dead male prostitute. That's what it means. A dead dog male prostitute. Yep. It's a curse word. It is. <laughs> it's worse than a live dog, too. You notice that? It's dead. It's dead. Right? Uh, somebody have a different version for verse 10. I do. Because that was a little confusing in, in the King James. What does it say? Okay, so when he tells them, let me cut off his head. It says, no, the king said, who asked your opinion, you sons of Zariah? Or Zariah? Yeah. <laughs> if the Lord has told him to curse me, who are we to stop him? Yes. He also says, why are you concerned with us? I had to rephrase this myself. He's not cursing you, he's cursing me. Right? right. So let him curse. Besides, God told him to curse. Uh-oh. Right. That's, that's what he said, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think David's kind of feeling bad for himself a little bit, you know? Might be a moment. David's reasoning, if God had allowed his own son to seek his life, God is allowing this to happen to him. Yep. But you know, that's the cool thing about David, because he kind of like, he, he humbles himself like, you know, who knows? Maybe that's what the Lord wants. Well, I got something different out of this too, though. I mean, and I, I've seen it happen, and I've even done it to myself. Y'all have children, right? Yeah. yeah. And are they perfect? No. no. Not even a little bit. I know. I they are. It's like, have you ever blamed yourself for your children's actions? Have you ever thought about blaming yourself for what your children not, did? Not really. Not really. My dad did. My dad blamed his uh, his self for what my brother fell into. It's like David was doing the same thing though. Right. He's kind of like, well, well, I deserve this because I I my son has come against me. Right. I didn't raise him right. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, let me keep going here. I got to finish this one portion. Uh, okay, in verse 12 it says. If he says it, uh, that the Lord will requite me. And uh, I like that word requ requite. I looked it up because I didn't know what it meant. And he would shove. And shove means return. He's saying, God will return me to him. Uh, he felt like he's cut off from God and the tabernacle of God. And uh, now... One thing about this guy, this guy Shumei, I, I think he's a, quite an idiot. Throwing rocks and dirt. The last time I seen that was when uh, 
Yeah, uh, in the movie The Planet of the Apes, when they were bringing Charlton Heston through, Mr. Moses, and they were throwing dirt on him and stuff. Yes, sir. They do that in church all the time. They do. <laughs> they do. They throw rocks and dirt. They do. And they look like idiots when they do that. Amen. That is some, some uh, throwing stones and dust is a mark of contempt and insult. Uh, so uh, that brings us to a close. And this is where David, David just ignores him. And they go into a, a, an oasis. And they start refreshing themselves there uh, with the things that the other guy had given. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, Ziba. All right, so next week, I'm going to close right here. We will be in verse 15, chapter 16, verse 15. Absalom enters Jerusalem. Before we close, can I just say one thing? Absolutely. I really like verse 12 on mine. It says, and perhaps the Lord will see that I am being wrong and will be blessed because of these curses today. Wow. See, I like that one. I do too. I do too. Yeah. It, it was out, the King James said requite there, which meant right. to bring back. Right. 